In 2007, native Arkansan Dr. John White began his 11th year as Chancellor of the University of Arkansas. Prior to returning to his alma mater, he served as Dean of Engineering at Georgia Tech, where he was a member of the faculty for 22 years. White is a 1962 graduate of the University of Arkansas. His graduate work was performed at Virginia Tech and Ohio State University. As Chancellor, White led the University of Arkansas through a landmark $1 billion fundraising campaign. Under his leadership, the U of A has dramatically improved its academic standing and is nationally recognized as a top-tier, student-centered research university. Chancellor, let's begin by going back to 1997. You're at Georgia Tech and you get a call, an opportunity to return to your alma mater to become chancellor. Uh, I know that must have been a difficult personal and professional decision because you had been at Georgia Tech for, I think, 22 years. Uh, what, how did you arrive at that decision, that it was time to come home and take on this challenging leadership position? Well, Alan Sugg is the most persistent person I have ever dealt with. He literally would not take no for an answer. I must have said no to Alan more than a dozen times. And uh, he finally called on a Wednesday night and said, this is the last time I'll be calling you because the search committee is going to meet on Monday. And they wanted me to call one more time to find out why you would not agree to come back to your alma mater. And I said, Alan, that's a low blow. I said, but let me, let me talk to Mary Lib. And actually Mary Lib talked me through that and she convinced me that it was something I, I should do. And I gave her all the reasons why it wasn't the right thing for us to do. And that I had no interest in being a university chancellor or president. That as an engineering educator, being dean of engineering at Georgia Tech, that I had the best job I thought that was out there. And she made several important points about it. She said, you've been asking Georgia Tech's alumni contribute to their capital campaign because they owe something back to their alma mater. Don't you think you owe something back to yours? And we talked about that. And finally, she, her final comment was, I'm afraid if you don't do it, you may someday regret it. And she was exactly right. Uh, looking back on it, if I hadn't agreed to come and be interviewed, I would have missed all of this. And I wouldn't have wanted to miss all of this. But at the same time, um, at least one co-worker told you, you don't want to go back to Arkansas and take that job. No, I know. And that, that was dear friend, uh, my boss, uh, Mike Thomas, the provost, a Longhorn grew up in Texas, went to school at UT, and he never missed an opportunity to tell a joke where Arkansas was the butt of the joke, and it just really wore on me. I mean, you know, I, I, I had more of that than I could stand. <laughs> and he said, uh, you're making a big mistake, John. He said, it's a third-rate institution in a third-rate state, and you'll never change it, and they're going to break your heart. I said, Mike, then that's all the reason I need. I've got to go. I've got to do my best to give Arkansas a better chance at a stronger future. That was the challenge right there. It was. It really was. Now, your friend has changed his mind, I take oh, it, after 10 years. And to Mike's credit, as stubborn as he is, and two years into this, as he saw what was happening, he said, John, you were right and I was wrong. He said, I'm so proud of what you're doing there. And in fact, every time the 2010 commission would come out with a report, he'd ask for a copy and he would send it to the governor in Texas and say, look at what they're doing at the University of Arkansas. You need to do something to help my alma mater, the University of Texas at Austin. July 1997, you move into the chancellor's office here uh, on the Fayetteville campus. Uh, what was the university like when you arrived? Uh, I know that you graduated in 1962, and you have told me that you had only rarely been back to the campus. So mm -hmm. what's it like when you move onto the campus and, and suddenly not only are you back, but you're the head guy? Well, it, it was a daunting uh, experience. I, I remember the uh, trepidations that I had. Um, 
there were many times uh, during those first few years when I wondered, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Uh, that big difference, huge difference in where I was in a large city of Atlanta uh, with a program that you could hardly tell the difference on campus in the summer and during the academic year because they ran pretty much full load uh, during the summer. And here in the summer, it's, it's much quieter. that We don't have as many students on campus. And, um, but then when, when September rolled around and the students showed up, then I felt like I was back in my element because um, that's the reason I'm here, frankly. It's about the students, and, and they, they keep me energized and keep my batteries charged. Could you tell immediately upon uh, being on the campus, could you see instantly some of the things that needed to change? Well, certainly I saw a number of things that I, I thought we needed to change. Uh, I, I made a point to our chief financial officer that we needed, if we were going to be viewed as successful, we need to look successful. And one of the things I was very concerned about was our physical appearance in terms of the upkeep of campus. Um, there were areas where there were weeds and, and uh, it, it just it did not make a statement that this was the flagship research university uh, for this state. And so I said, if, if how we look is going to define who we are and we must look really good and I wanted that. So as I would walk across campus I would carry a, a plastic bag with me and if I saw trash I'd start picking it up and putting the bag and, and I'd go before faculty groups and I would pull out the bag of trash and I would say help me make this our home that treat it in the same way you do your home and let's see if we can't get our students and faculty and staff to help us eliminate litter on this campus. Uh, so there were, there were a number of things. The, the thing though that, that really caused me to come and has caused me to stay is the real, real dedication of our faculty to our students. That uh, in contrast with where I was before, uh, the faculty here have a deep and abiding commitment to our students and giving them a, a quality undergraduate educational experience. Um, clearly, uh, this campus then and even still now needs to develop a stronger graduate research program. Uh, and we're working at that. And we've made some real strides in the last 10 years. But as I look forward and look at what the great need and the great opportunity is for this campus, it's at the graduate research level. Uh, in fact, when I came, that was going to be the thing I was going to bring because my background at the National Science Foundation and at Georgia Tech was really all about graduate research. And I was stunned when I took Mary Lib to see the state. We drove all over the state in the summer of 97. Uh, any uh, civic club that would have us, we would go and speak and I would talk about keeping the best and brightest in the state and building a great research university. Um, but one of the things that I heard that caused me to be really discouraged was how many of the best and brightest students in the state were leaving the state to go to school elsewhere. And while I did not come with a, a desire to have as a major priority strengthening undergraduate uh, education, it soon became obvious that I had to address the undergraduate reputation. Uh, not the quality of what students were getting in the classroom, but rather how it was perceived within the state and nationally. And uh, had to change that perception, had to turn around the notion that if you wanted to go to a great research university, you had to leave Arkansas to do it. And so that then became much more the focus of what I did than I ever anticipated when I accepted the, the offer to be chancellor. I know you've talked a lot about how one of your early jobs was to really change attitudes. You've talked about those attitudes that may have existed out there in the state. Uh, did you also deal with some of that here on our own campus, not only among uh, perhaps some of the students, but the faculty members, that one of the jobs 
that you were faced with was perhaps making sure that we started feeling better about ourselves. Well, in, in fact, uh, Larry, one of your students uh, approached me just before I walked into the courtroom in the law school building for the trustees to vote on me to be chancellor. And she asked me, and she said, uh, uh, Chancellor White, uh, you have said that you're a change agent. What are the first things you're going to change? I said, well, actually, I'm not going to change very many things, but we are going to change a lot. And what we're going to change is attitudes and expectations. And that was the thing I really wanted to change. I, there were People didn't feel as good about being here as I felt they should feel. Uh, and around the state, they didn't understand that the University of Arkansas was a, an absolutely fantastic university. Um, I think that, that we uh, had, in some ways, I think that w we had set our expectations too low, that we were content for this campus to be a good regional university, as opposed to being the premier university not only in the state, but competitive with the premier universities throughout the nation. And uh, that was the thing that I wanted to do, was to, to stop people saying, well, we're the best in the state. No, no, we shouldn't be content with that. We need to be able to say, we're as good as the best anywhere in the United States. Uh, that our graduates are going to have to be competitive with graduates from all over this country, indeed all over this world, and that we should not be content to say, well, we're the strongest university in Arkansas. Uh, so that, that was the big challenge, uh, I think, was getting people to set their sights higher and to set their expectations higher. As I went around the state, I would ask in civic clubs, uh, which universities do you want us to compete with in football? And they would immediately say Tennessee and Florida and Alabama and Texas. And, and then I would say, which ones do you want us to compete with in basketball? And they would say Duke and Carolina and Kentucky. And I'd say, and which ones do you want us to compete with in history? And there was silence. In English, and there was silence. And then they would begin to say, Harvard and Yale and Princeton and Virginia. And, and I said, we need to be as nationally competitive in our academic fields as we have been on our athletic fields. I believe today we are. And, I'd, and that's not because we are less competitive athletically, but I believe that our academic programs are nationally competitive, that we are able to attract faculty, staff, and students uh, that could easily go to the top, top places in the country. In fact, the entering freshman class this fall, I know of individual students who turned down Yale, turned down Harvard, turned down Stanford, turned down Georgia Tech, to come here, to be here, to be a part of this. They're excited about that. And, um, and that has been going on now for several years. Um, the freshman class of 1998 changed the University of Arkansas. Let's talk about that group because I know that is a freshman class that is near and dear to your heart. And one of the things that you did when you came here is that you really almost instantaneously put a real emphasis on scholars to deserving freshmen. And the, I want you to talk about that and, and talk about the chancellor's scholars because mm -hmm. that during your tenure here as chancellor has been a, a real major part of, of the thrust of, of your leadership. Well, as I said in the summer of 97, as I traveled around the state, I, and I became aware of the fact that so many were leaving, and I came back when uh, school started, and I met with the staff, and I said, I want us to, to offer a chancellor scholarship to students who have 
um, achieved a certain level on the board score and a certain level on uh, their high school grade point. Uh, and I said, I want to offer uh, $8,000 chancellor scholarship to each of those. Um, how many chancellor scholars did we have this fall? They said, we had 41 freshmen that were chancellor scholars. I said, okay, if we go after the best and the brightest and get uh, them to come, how many do you think we might get? And they said, well, we could maybe at best we could triple it. I said, what do you think we could get to 150? Well, that'd be a stretch. I said, well, let's, let's budget. Let's go for 150 chancellor scholars. And let's make it very clear to high school guidance counselors what the requirements are for a chancellor scholarship at the university. And let's really go after keeping the best and brightest in the state. About in January, staff came to me and said, we've got to stop the chancellor scholarship program. I said, what do you mean we have to stop it? And they said, well, we've, we've already gone past 150. And I said, really? They said, oh, yes. I said, well, how many do you think we might get? They said, we may get 200, 250. Well, would we get more than that? Oh, it's unlikely. Well, what's the maximum number you think we could get? And they said, uh, 300. Okay, well, I added 10% to that. That was 330. So we were 180 short. So I went to the Walton family and, and explained what was going on and asked if they could support us for the 180. And they said they would. Well, we blew right past 180 of those. We went past 330. We went past 350. We went past 400. We went to 492. But you didn't mind that growing. Up, oh, I loved it. I said, if we're going to have a crisis here, let's let it be a budget crisis, <laughs> not a crisis about quality. Let's find a way to fund these students yeah. getting on our campus. Yeah, I, I, there's nothing I enjoy more than going out and asking someone to give us private support because we have more great students wanting to come to the University of Arkansas than we've been able to provide scholarship support for. And, uh, and people have responded uh, to it. They really have. How many do we have now here in the year 2007? Oh, well, unfortunately, uh, because the budget constraints and all of that, we had to establish that we would be at 250 a year as a freshman class. However, we then have introduced the Bodenhammers. We uh, have the Sturgis. We have the Honors Fellows. We have uh, all of these that, that now, in, to the point that uh, of the roughly 3,000 freshmen who will come, uh, about half of those students are getting some form of scholarship. The Silas Hunt scholarships have helped us a lot. We have uh, academic achievement scholarships beyond that, university scholarships, leadership scholarships. Uh, all of those are helping. But uh, Larry, what's interesting is if we were if we were maintaining the same criteria this fall for a chancellor scholarship that we had for 1998, we would have had almost a thousand chancellor scholars on our campus. Uh, but we simply don't have the resources uh, to be able to do that. So this year, there were a number of students with very strong academic credentials that we were unable to offer any scholarship support to. So we've gone from a situation where we had, I think it was seven Sturgis Fellows and 41 Chancellor Scholars in 97 now, to a situation where more than a thousand young people wanting to come to the University of Arkansas who would have qualified for a chancellor scholarship, and we're able to offer that chancellor scholarship to about 25% of them. Funding, of course, is always an issue. We've done a great mm -hmm. job here of going into the private sector. Um, but I've heard you, uh, you've told me that one of the real challenges, one of sometimes the disappointment, is the uh, support for at the state level. 
and that continues to be something that you guys are fighting. Uh, lots of other people are struggling for, I guess, the same slice of the pie. Yeah. If I, there are several areas where I don't give myself very good grades. And my inability to communicate to the General Assembly um, that the best investment they could make for the future of this state is to invest in the University of Arkansas is clearly one of those areas that I, I'm, I'm disappointed, uh, frankly, that I have not been able to generate the level of support from the state that this campus merits, needs, and absolutely deserves. Um, yeah, I, I give myself a uh, very low grade on that. I give but myself at the same time, a low grade. Historically, that's always been a problem. There were decades when the university got no, no money at all from the state for any buildings. Well, of course, it's historically been that way. But as far as I'm concerned, that's a lame excuse. It had historically been that way in North Carolina, too, and they did something about it. It historically been that way in Georgia. They did something about it. It calls for very strong and bold leadership to say history is one thing, the future is another. And unless we change things, the future is not going to be brighter than our history was. And that's the thing that is uh, some way, I mean, even in this last uh, General Assembly, I literally got down on my knees and begged for them to fund the formula. All that got was some laughs. Um, now, sure, we did come out of it with um, uh, one of the largest uh, appropriations that we've had uh, here. And, uh, and I appreciate that very much. I, I don't uh, in any way want to sound like I'm not appreciative. And I recognize the legislators are doing their best to try to take uh, finite resources and allocate them over needs that far exceed their resources. And certainly the constitutional issue on K through 12 and Lakeview, that has dominated the thinking of the General Assembly now for multiple sessions. But we must find a way, even if it means generating new revenue sources to fund public higher education in this state, if we want Arkansas to be counted among the successors, the successful uh, states. You look at what's going on in India and China, and it's scary. But you just look at what's going on in other states here, and you recognize that many of them are stepping up in ways that we have not yet done. And I'm, uh, I am concerned about what the future of Arkansas is going to be if we do not find a way to provide adequate support for public higher education. And it's not all about Fayetteville. It's not just Fayetteville. It's about Arkansas State, and it's about UCA, and, and Henderson State, and Arkansas Tech, and, and uh, UA Fort Smith, and UALR, all of them, that, that the, the resources that we have are just not allowing us to compete uh, year in and year out with the likes of our neighboring states, University of Missouri, University of Texas, Texas A&M, um, LSU, University of Kentucky, University of Tennessee, all are moving forward at a much faster rate than Arkansas is able to move. When you came here, you knew you were going to promote some change. Go back to that uh, comment you made to that student. Uh, and when you are promoting change and when you know we must make changes, there are going to be bumps in the road. Um, there was that issue involving university press, and there have been various issues involving athletics. Um, what were some of those, were there ever any, any of those challenges that you felt like, ah, oh, this is just not worth it, to heck with it? Well, I, I, it was a very difficult period. The first three years, uh, it, it uh, I suspect it would be surprising to you, it's not surprising to my wife, that I literally was reduced to tears several times during those first three years uh, because I, I had uh, 
such high, high expectations of what we were going to be able to accomplish at the university. And, and I wondered, uh, based on some resistance that, that was much stronger resistance than I anticipated, that it was going to be a much tougher uh, challenge that I was facing than, than uh, that I ever imagined. Um, but, you know, I look back on it and, and I've, made, I've made a lot of mistakes in 10 years. Uh, I really have. There, if I had it to do over again, there are a lot of things I'd do differently. But one thing I would, I would not change and one thing would not do differently is what my motivation has been all along. Um, when I was being interviewed in, in the final interview with the trustees there in Little Rock,